Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister, uh, uh, appearing before the committee. And thank you for your recent announcement on stabilizing Canada's immigration targets uh, uh, recently. Uh, my, like we, we have heard from many temporary foreign workers that they come to Canada for better opportunities and wish to establish themselves permanently. Could you please um, elaborate uh, or expand uh, on this or inform this committee uh, of pathways to permanent residence available to temporary foreign workers? As, as I mentioned to, to one of your colleagues, uh, MPLE, that there are a number of areas where, um, where the transition from, um, from temporary TR to PR, temporary residence to permanent residence, is a real possibility. It is not uh, open to everyone. And I think that should remain the case, uh, given our concerns around international mobility rights and uh, reciprocal arrangements we have with other countries. I think that it is legitimate to to say that um, in, as well as in the context of our own orderly migration with respect to which the, the, the levels that I spoke and announced last week are a sign of, uh, including the, 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 the strategic um, review that we performed. Uh, clearly there needs to be, in addition to the topics covered today about abuse methods where people can come to Canada as a temporary foreign worker and aspire to be Canadian through the path of permanent residence. Um, that is the case for 100 plus thousand people. Uh, I, the, the exact number I could provide to the committee if it so wished. Uh, but it is, it, it is a, a large flow. It isn't every international student that becomes a permanent resident and uh, Canadian. It, it, is not every, um, it is not every farm laborer that becomes uh, a, a permanent resident. But it does, um, there are pathways, whether it's express entry on the Canadian experience class where people come here and get points for the experience that they have. Um, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, which is a federally administered program uh, based on, on skill sets. Um, or what provinces really enjoy, which is the provincial nominee process. Uh, and in the case of Quebec, the, uh, the jurisdiction that it exercises under the Quebec Canada Accord that was signed, um, that goes back uh, four, uh, 30 years now. Uh, so there, there, there are ways, um, and they are, they are important, but I'm also looking at a number of ways in which we can increase that, particularly in areas where we need workers. And we need to offer them a little more hope than simply come here, build a building, and go home. And that is um, notably in the construction area. And these are policies that I haven't announced yet. We're still working on. But they are ones where we are examining it to make sure that, it is, um, that, that there is not abuse, but also that there is a pathway to, to permanent residency and citizenship eventually. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, on on uh, immigration consultants, uh, this government has put uh, in place the College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants to regulate immigration consultants and protect Canadians' clients from uh, nefarious uh, bad actors, in which the Conservative have voted against. In 2022, government, the government also implemented a code of professional conduct for consultants. Can you explain the role that the college plays in uh, rep rep reprimand reprimanding uh, bad actors in our immigration system, specifically um, when it comes to temporary foreign workers? So, so the, the college, which is um, up and working, it, it is, uh, its essential goal is to make sure that the code uh, for a professional conduct for consultants uh, that establish, establishes a strong and ethical and professional standards that all licensed consultants must abide by. Obviously, the worst, worst actors don't uh, get licensed, but clearly this is a mechanism that is important for, um, for, for, for people that are served by them to have that assurance is that they will get the proper advice. Uh, there, is, uh, th there, there is in the industry some real opportunism, um, some real fraud and people taking advantage of folks, but I think the college is an important step in making sure people are, are, are behaving the way they should. Um, whether that's, in, well, I would say that part of it, but also making sure that they're, they're providing regulatory advice to us on what we can, we can do better. Um, that improving oversight and strengthening enforcement, as well as increasing accountability, um, meant that 
and, and was enabled by an investment of about um, $48 million over four years with, with a $10 million ongoing commitment that, um, that, that, that has allowed us to put this into place. Uh, we're talking essentially from, of consultants that range in, from 6,000 in 2018 to now 12,000 in 22. Uh, we expect, and I've met with them, we expect their role to be even more prominent in an area where we are facing historic volume of people wanting to come to Canada that are subject to abuse. Obviously, the concern that needs to be addressed is, is some of the opportunism that, that, that happens abroad, and that's something that um, also needs to be